This morning, the nation awakens to yet another possible government shutdown in just 13 days. And while the government faces the possibility of running out of money, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy showing Americans what Republicans think is truly important. On Thursday, in a closed-door meeting, McCarthy telling his radical right colleagues that were threatening to oust him from his speakership, go ahead and file the effing motion. At the same time, though, McCarthy spinelessly caving into Marjorie Taylor Greene's repeated cries for impeachment of President Biden without a scintilla of evidence of any wrongdoing. Without a formal House vote and even reversing his previous position, McCarthy announced he's tasking the Oversight, Judiciary and Ways and Means Committees to launch an impeachment inquiry into President Biden and his family. The White House says the president has done nothing wrong and Republicans have no basis for an impeachment inquiry. But on Wednesday, McCarthy said the inquiry has nothing to do with impeaching the president. So all we're trying to do, it's not impeachment, nothing to do with it. It's just answer these questions. Had the president been truthful when he said he never talked to his son about business or never dealt with Burisma, never dealt with Ukraine, we would never do this. It's not impeachment, nothing to do with it. Tim Mulvey, former communications director of the January 6th committee and the communications strategist of Denton's Global Advisors, joins us now. Tim, Kevin McCarthy there saying the quiet part out loud. So if it's not about impeachment, as he's just clearly stated, then why launch any inquiry whatsoever? Well, I think what you see here, Katie, and good morning, thanks for having me, is, is this is where you end up when you announce the results of an investigation before you do any investigating. This House majority, the Republican majority, has been saying exactly what they've planned to do uh, if they got the power back in the House of Representatives, even before they won the House of Representatives back. And the problem there is that when you announce the results of an investigation, you have to go out and find the evidence uh, to get to those results. So you end up with a whistleblower who disappears and turns out as an unregistered foreign agent. And then you have a star witness who says that President Biden didn't have anything to do uh, with his son's business dealings. And then another whistleblower whose testimony is contradicted by the FBI agent conducting the investigation. And then finally, you have to, I guess, escalate the investigation into this impeachment inquiry, which is supposed to unlock uh, some sort of magical investigative power that the House doesn't already have. It doesn't really work that way. Uh, but Kevin McCarthy doesn't really have an exit ramp here. And uh, that's because he announced long ago that this is where they were going to end up, essentially. And of course, because he and other acolytes of the former president are doing the former president's bidding and pushing ahead with this sham probe. So, Tim, this is not the first time that the GOP is a hammer looking for a nail. That's just kind of par for the course, day ending and a why for them. But let's talk about how this could actually be stopped. During the Trump administration, the DOJ's Office of Legal Counsel issued an opinion that no committee may undertake impeachment without authority from the full House. McCarthy hasn't even taken a House vote. He pretends that because Speaker Pelosi at the time announced the, the impeachment and then finally got the vote, he seems to think that she rewrote the rules here. But what's good for the goose is good for the gander, though, right? That's exactly right. The Republican majority are now having to live with all of the norms that the Trump administration shredded. Uh, the House impeachment inquiry vote is more than a talking point. As you point out, that was the entire legal basis of the Trump administration for refusing to cooperate with the impeachment probe in 2019. They didn't turn over a shred of records. Dozens of witnesses refused to cooperate. And that's the standard that the House majority is going to have to live with as they seek information from the administration and presumably from witnesses and ent entities outside the administration. Uh, so, you know, there's no guarantee that they're going to be able to get any more information than they are getting. Also, it's worth pointing out that this House majority hasn't said what information they haven't been able to obtain. So far, as far as uh, the chairman of the Oversight Committee has indicated, uh, the president and those around the president have cooperated with the ongoing House probe. So again, just because they say we're in an imp impeachment inquiry doesn't mean that the House has some sort of untapped investigative power that they haven't been using yet. Yeah, and I want to stay on that point because I'm glad that you brought it up. Because even though McCarthy can label it an impeachment inquiry, it's not like those committees that he announced, three of them, have any new powers or tools at their disposal. They've already been spinning their wheels with multiple committees investigating the Bidens, have nothing to show for it thus far. So how much should the Democrats be harping on the fact that this is a literal waste of time and money trying to pursue this impeachment move? 
Well, I think it's worth pointing that out. I think it's worth pointing out the hypocrisy uh, of uh, where the speaker is now. But as you mentioned earlier, uh, we're 14 days away from a government shutdown. You have a House majority that is using its power to kick up dust uh, against Donald Trump's political opponent, just like Donald Trump has asked uh, investigator after investigator to do for years. Uh, the Biden administration needs to focus on all of its positive accomplishments and the fact that one of the houses, one of the branches of government is focused on using its power to go after its political enemies. Uh, there's a record of accomplishment that the Biden administration should be focusing on and not going tit for tat with the House majority uh, in this investigation that so far hasn't produced any evidence. Tim, I'm, I've got less than a minute, but I am going to push back for a second. Isn't it time, though, that the Biden administration, the Bidens do push back. I understand he's the sitting president. I know you shouldn't maybe give more oxygen to something that's BS and shouldn't deserve the oxygen, but doesn't it also just kind of let it let the stink sit if you don't push back and actually respond almost tit for tat for what they're coming out with? Certainly, the Speaker McCarthy and the, the House committees need to be held accountable for every falsehood they tell, uh, every innuendo that they uh, insinuate somehow ties the president to, to all this. Uh, absolutely. They need to be fact-checked because at the end of the day, the House majority knows that they're not going to remove the president. The, they know that the Senate isn't going to, uh, isn't going to remove him from office. Uh, what's going to happen, of course, is that if they do impeach him, he's going to be, he's going to be acquitted by the Senate. They're just trying to kick up dust and create political problems for the president. So as, as much as they're able to push back and, not let them kick up that dust, then yeah, they, they do need to they do need to make sure that the House majority's lies are are laid bare. Well, they're typically all bark, no bite. Tim Mulvey, welcome to the Katie Fang Show. And thanks for joining us this morning. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. It.